We have those air masses swirling together in the central U.S., but on the radar, not all that impressive. Kind of a short line of thunderstorms in northeastern Missouri. Along the length of that, you can see what looks like little bow echoes. So there could be a little bit of localized strong winds, but SPC, they're not seeing much in the way of problems there, just a marginal risk and no watch boxes in effect. Storm reports, pretty scarce. Just a few high wind reports in Louisiana and Mississippi. And there's what we had yesterday. We had a late report come in of a EF1 tornado near Canyon Lake, which is north of San Antonio. That was about 1.04 a.m., Elsewhere, some scattered wind and hail reports across the Lone Star State. The surface map early this evening shows that those storms in northeastern Missouri associated with that occluded front. And this whole system is the same one that we had in West Texas yesterday. It swept towards the northeast and brought the cold front out towards the lower Mississippi River. Up to the north, we have a breach of cold air coming southward, but quite a bit warmer compared to last month. 40s, 30s, and then we get up into northern Saskatchewan, and then we finally get into the single-digit temperatures. Way up north, we do have the below zero conditions, as low as minus 21 on northern Victoria Island. However, that air is definitely not coming south. 1037 millibar high up there will drive some of that cold air into the U.S. Certainly not the bitter cold air, but we're going to get a little bit of a taste of early spring, I guess you could say, across much of the eastern and central U.S. Also down to the southwest, a new Pacific system. And there it is. You can see the north winds at Vegas gusting up to 29 knots, 45 degrees at Tonopah with a stiff north wind, and an unseasonably cold temperature of 60 in Phoenix with snow around Flagstaff. So that tells you that that's not a typical March scenario. There's kind of a powerful system moving through that region. So not only will that have an effect on that part of the U.S., but that will make its way into Texas over the next day or two. And of course, the southern U.S. should see a little piece of that weather system as well. Now, one of my favorite tools for analyzing the air masses is water vapor. This is a satellite-derived product, and what we see here is mostly the mid and upper tropospheric humidity. So where we have yellow and orange, that's going to be some very dry air. Now, we can't say that about the lower levels because of the blocking effect of water vapor throughout the atmospheric column, we're just not going to pick up very well what's happening in the lower levels. But in the mid and upper levels, we should pick that up pretty well. So what we see here is certainly dry air in the mid and upper levels and moist air showing up in the Four Corners region. And that's that second system there. If you look at the circulation, that paints out the picture of a vortex over Arizona. So that's going to be the upper level low traversing that area and a similar effect out there in northern Missouri. So using this, we can compare that to our model products and find out how well they are placing those systems. Also, by looking at the distribution of humidity, we can kind of get an idea of what's happening as far as jet stream placement subsidence. So that's going to be back behind the uh, trough, which is probably over the Midwest region and out ahead of it, upper level lift. And a similar effect back there in Arizona, probably another trough back in there with lift out ahead of it and subsidence back behind it. So there's the dynamics picture this evening. Two troughs, two upper level lows one over northern Arizona, and the other in northwestern Missouri. Well, that upper level low in the Missouri area is going to open up and lift northward into the Lake Superior region. 
And then the other upper level low will progress northeast and open up over Colorado there. And that leaves us with a very deep trough, kind of like that right there. The main jet stream located way down there in northern Mexico. So I would expect maybe some rain sh showers or snow showers in the mountains. The Sierra Madres through that region. And that'll spread into the Big Bend area later in the evening. Then overnight, those dynamics lift out into Texas. So we could see an MCS developing back in this area here, assuming there's enough return moisture. If that's the case, we're definitely going to see an MCS out of this. And that lifts northeastward quickly during the afternoon. And wow, here comes another trough in close succession. The first one lifts out. And it's pretty much rounding the base of this larger medium scale trough. And then we have another one digging in. And yep, that's going to head into Texas for Saturday and bring another shot of precipitation. But after that, some ridging definitely indicated. So maybe kind of a quiet start to next week. And let's just see how all that comes together. Kind of hard to see that system, but there it is in southern New Mexico, south of Arizona, and that's what we're keeping our eye on for tomorrow evening. There's those snow showers in northern Mexico spreading eastward as an MCS. There it is popping up around San Antonio about midnight tomorrow night and moving eastward into east Texas around dawn. So I'm not really too sure what kind of low-level support we're going to have since we just had a system blowing through here a day ago, actually last night. And what we see here is a lot of capping, some very steep mid-level lapse rates, and very shallow moisture. So it certainly has a forced appearance. I'm sure we're going to get some sort of convection out of this, but the ingredients are just not optimal. So taking another look, let's bring this up about six hours and put a sounding out there near Shreveport. And here we see that the cap strength has been reduced, probably due to some upper level lift. Certainly seems implied out here by the Omega values. And the moisture has actually come up pretty decent into the mid 60s and with about 5,000 feet of depth. So I think that cold front stalling along the Gulf Coast is helping to keep a reserve of moisture right offshore, kind of like that. And let's see if that is borne out by the dew point fields. Yep, there it is lurking off the coast. 60s and some low 70s dew points right offshore. So the question is, when is that going to start interacting with the stuff tomorrow night? So here we are, 3Z. You can see the dynamics coming out of Mexico right there. 20 to 30 knot westerly winds. And yeah, it looks like as you go east, the moisture certainly improves. So there's uh, Victoria. Moisture starts out in the mid-60s pretty good. Holds together for about one or 2,000 feet and then tapers off. The capping has been reduced. Steep lapse rates coming in. So, yeah, there's going to be a little interaction of that moisture with the MCS overnight. And this looks like a little bit more moisture than what we had last night. And the shear values look favorable for tornadoes. It still looks like a forced event, so... You know, this is near the convective minimum, so I'm not really looking for an outbreak here, but I may want to take a closer look at the data tomorrow. Anyway, let's see how it progresses as it moves eastward. There's the convective maximum, so we may be looking at a bit of severe weather in Mississippi. A little bit of warm conditions up there near 700 millibars. However, the moisture does look fairly decent. The capes could be a little bit better. Anyway, that's going to move eastward. 
Looks like by this time the main wave has shifted out over the Appalachians and things start to quiet down along the tail end. And then we're looking at the next wave coming out towards the weekend. You can see the moisture return setting up in Texas. That cyan color, those are 60s dew points. And then we have the interaction with a wave right about there. And this looks mostly like it's cold front driven right there. And once again, we're close to the convective minimum. So Saturday night, maybe a little bit of potential. But you can see the precip fields just not signaling very much at all. So I think there's some major problems with the air mass. And it looks like maybe the culprit is very low instability and very weak moisture. So not very much of a moisture return there. That looks a little bit better. Southeast Texas, but lapse rates are conditionally unstable. So those are some of the things you would look for assessing a convective weather day. After that, cold air comes in and things shut down until this next Pacific Northwest system drives into the northern plains. Moisture returns starting to set up around midweek, but we're going to have a period of some very quiet weather. And then maybe towards the end of next week, something will get going. And I think that's about all that I want to cover there. I do want to thank our new supporters, Trey Thomas, Tom Dieterman, and Mark Versiles. Thank you very much for your contribution. It is greatly appreciated. Anyway, we'll see you all tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.